Israeli military video released on Sunday claims to show soldiers raiding bunkers and finding stockpiled weapons in southern Lebanon. In a statement, the Israeli military said that its troops continue conducting limited, localized, targeted ground raids based on precise intelligence in southern Lebanon. They said that they eliminated dozens of terrorists, raided terrorist infrastructure above and below ground, and located numerous munitions and weapons. Israel has intensified bombardment of Lebanon since September 23, vowing to cripple Hezbollah, which began firing into northern Israel after Hamas' October 7 attack triggered the war in Gaza. Israel says it is targeting Hezbollah members and infrastructure and says the group places military assets in civilian areas. Some 2,000 people have been killed, including Hezbollah fighters and commanders, but also hundreds of civilians, often in strikes on homes. The exchange of fire has raised fears of an all-out regional war pitting Israel and the United States against Iran and its militant proxies, which include Hamas and the Hezbollah militant group in Lebanon, where Israel launched a ground invasion earlier this month after nearly a year of lower-level conflict. בתוך הסבך, ממש בתוך היער. נמצא המתחם הזה. נכון, נמצא מצבור אמלך מאוד גדול. בנוי מבוטן. The war unleashed by Russia against Ukraine will soon go into a frozen state, regardless of the wishes of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russia does not have the resources to continue it. Putin's ally, former Odessa City Council deputy and collaborator Igor Dmitriev, wrote about this openly in Telegram. He claims that the freezing of the war will happen on its own, regardless of the desires or ambitions in the Kremlin or on Bankova. The fact is that Russia has exhausted the resources to continue its aggression. Ukraine is also seriously exhausted. The current situation can be described by a simple formula. There is nothing to attack with, no one to defend with. Russia does not have the material resources to attack, Dmitriev said. He clarified that the Kremlin is not ready for a total mobilization of society and the economy. The traitor who helped Russia in its aggression against Ukraine now calls the so-called SVO a mistake. This war was a mistake, and it will be taken out of the spotlight and eventually forgotten, the collaborator said. He said that Russia really wants to end the war against Ukraine, but it can't do it. Beautifully, each new move only worsens the aggressor's position. He claims that negotiations on ending the war between Ukraine and the Russian Federation have been going on since the very beginning. Already in the first days of the so-called SVO, Moscow realized that it had failed and tried to persuade Kiev to capitulate through negotiations. Nothing good came of it. From the very first days, it was clear that nothing good was in the cards. They wanted to fly in for free, but it didn't work out. And then the wave of problems and losses only grew. They decided to pile on with everything they had to scare. It didn't work out to include four regions of Ukraine into the Russian Federation, now there are only problems with this," said Dmitriev. He stressed that Russia has not been able to achieve a radical change in the situation at the front in two and a half years and apparently will not be able to do so. Meanwhile, Western sanctions are gradually undermining the Russian economy, and now the Russian Federation has found itself in a trap that it has driven itself into. No one in the Kremlin knows how to get out of this situation, although in private conversations everyone is actively advocating for the earliest possible end to the SVO. How to get out? It's not clear. 
At the very beginning of the war, it was possible to pretend that it hadn't started yet. But then we weren't ready to soberly assess the situation. Now, in personal conversations, many admit that it's really necessary to finish. But there are no options for doing it beautifully. Dmitriev stated, Russian forces conducted some assault operations in the area of Toretsk and Chasivya in Donetsk Oblast, according to Anastasia Bobovnikova, spokesperson for the Luhansk Operational Tactical Group of Ukraine. Toretsk, a Ukrainian stronghold since Russia's first invasion of Donbass in 2014, is a strategically important settlement. Control of the city would give Russian forces a foothold to advance further into Ukrainian-held territory in Donetsk Oblast a key objective in their military campaign. The capture of the Chasiv Yar would allow the Russian military to launch an offensive against other cities in the region Kostyantinivka, Druskivka, Kramatorsk and Sloviansk. In April 2024, Ukrainian Army spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Nazar Voloshin said that the city's loss would seriously complicate the situation for Ukrainian forces as all logistics routes in the area would be in Russia's hands. The most difficult situation is currently reported near Chasiv Yar and Toretsk. Unfortunately, both settlements have been the hardest areas for quite some time. Near Chasiv Yar, slightly to the south, in the Stupochki district, five assaults occurred today, and in the Toretsk area, six, said Bobovnikova. The Ukrainian military spokesperson said Russian groups consisting of infantry squads of three to five people attempt to storm and break through Ukrainian defenses without using equipment. Russian motorized rifle brigades are also stationed near Toretsk. The Russian military brings personnel to the front lines mostly at night, replenishes losses and from newly established positions they then launch assaults on our troops," the spokesperson explained. Bobovnikova also noted that on the Siversk front, Russian occupiers are using golf carts and motorcycles for assaults, trying to capture as much territory as possible before winter. There are many Russian troops there. For example, a Russian airborne division is stationed opposite Chasiv Yar. The Russian airborne units are better supplied with equipment and are trying to accumulate more in forested terrain near Chasiv Yar. However, a canal near Chasiv Yar prevents them from using equipment for assaults as our artillery and drones control it," Bobovnikova concluded. Earlier, the Ukrainian spokesperson stated that the number of enemy assault actions had slightly decreased on the Kramatorsk, Toretsk and Siversk fronts. The situation in Toretsk has also stabilized, with the Ukrainian defense forces preventing Russians from advancing beyond the city's eastern part. 